thank you so much for the follows and for being here and you guys are just awesome thank you so uh our raid call is on the day so we are gonna pop over then Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good whatever, everybody. Welcome to the Raiders. So how is everybody feeling today? Echo feedback static. Are you getting it from me or are you getting it from... Um, is there still echo feedback static happening? Because I can't hear anything. Uh, okay. I think what you were catching, I still had my phone on with uh, with uh, uh, Shy Red Fox's um, stream on it, so we were probably <laughs> playing a little feedback game there. <coughs> so how's everybody doing with the new prompts? Oh yes, yes. I guess first first announcement: my 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 emotes were released from Twitch jail. Um, so yeah, those of you who uh, who are subscribers or who uh, either on your own or, or courtesy of of Lyraine the Mad Bomber, um, you have a couple of emotes to play with. Enjoy them. I have a question for everybody though about the emotes. I've I've been looking at them. I really like them. Uh, should I take the backgrounds off them? All right. Do, do you like them with or without the yellow square backgrounds? What does everybody think? Because you guys are going to use them more as, mu as much as I am. So I, I think you know, problem. Some of the text might disappear if if it's not on a background, depending on whether you whether you're using a white or a dark um, you know chat stream background. Um, so I mean, I'll I'll leave them alone for now. But but I'd be curious to know what people think. Um, yeah, that's that shy. You're right. Yeah, like I said, it, it 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 at least eliminates the background issue. So, all right, everybody. People seem to say keep it. Great, cool. Um, I still do not have my uh, channel point uh, symbol up. I'm, I'm waiting for that to get delivered from my son-in-law slash graphic designer. Uh, that'll hopefully be here by my Saturday stream. Um, I do have I do have my channel points named, and they are there. You can play around with a few things there. You can remind me to hydrate, which is something I could use a reminder for all the time. Um, I, I I'm still one of the few that um, at the moment I'm, I'm still permitting. Uh, oh, there's a posture check. Okay, well we'll start with a posture check. <laughs> um, We'll, uh, what was I going to say? Um, what was I going to say? I've completely lost my stream of thought now. Oh, I definitely need more coffee in the morning. Uh, oh, yes, um, I remember now. Uh, I'm one of the few, I'm, I'm still allowing uh, links on the chat. Uh, I will probably continue to allow that through um, summer camp. Simply because one of the things I like to do is, uh, you know, at some point during the stream, we'll be doing um, some showcases, and and right now that's the easiest way to uh, to, to get a, a a link up so that I can find, you know, so that I can bring up an article and read it for you guys. Um, 
that does mean, though, I, I, I need to kind of try to keep an eye on the chat while I'm doing anything else. Uh, if I do get a spammer, I will manually ban them. Um, if you guys see one, shout it out just to help me find it in case I happen to have my eyes somewhere else at the time. Um, I, I may go toward banning links later on, but like I said, at least through summer camp when we know we're, we're spending a lot of... Uh, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of, of showcasing of each other's articles. It's the easiest way to do it. Um, I, I do have a Discord that I could use like WD Michael does, but right now that Discord is mostly set up to deal with my uh, Patreon patrons and my playtesters. So I have to do a little work on that to, to open it up a little bit before I can think of taking the WD Michael approach. Uh... What else in the way of announcements before we get started? Um, yeah, summer camp is, is, we're getting close to the end. Uh, this is actually something that uh, segues, oh, oh, by the way, yeah, is, is Isaac, is Isaac Tom here? Uh, let's see, is Isaac here? Isaac Tom is here, good. Uh, have you, have you made your uh, 50 yet? Because um, I'm not going to change it now, but you'll notice my uh, my um, uh, um, mod bot, you know, is, is still throwing reminders for you. So you so you get one more day of free a free reminder push. Um, but if if you made your twenty, oh, you're still forty seven. Okay, come on, guys. And somebody, there have to be three of you out there that are not following Isaac. Um, do it now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if you do it now, then I can then I can change my uh, my mod bot um, ads. So uh, talking about plans after summer camp, um, I'm going to keep three streams a week. Um, but what I was thinking of doing was kind of kind of spreading things out a little bit. Um, I was thinking of my Sunday stream, which tends to be a quieter, easier day. Um, uh, I was going to do map-related stuff, but, but again, in keeping with the World Anvil, when I say map-related stuff, I mean, first of all, maps for my world, uh, specifically for my world. Um, but I, I, I want to spend as much time as possible not only talking about, you know, like something I'll, like I'm, I'll be using Incarnate for the maps, uh, not just how to use Incarnate, although there will be a fair amount of that, but but once you have a map, what what can you do with it in... World Anvil. Uh, where can you use them? How do you play with the pins? Um, how do you, you know, what can you do with interactive maps in World Anvil? So there will be a lot of that. Um, I will. I will also warn that you know it's going to be learning experience for me as well as everybody else. So it'll be the kind of stream where you get to watch mistakes happening, and you learn. You get to learn how not to do things by watching me, think, you know, fall into the traps. Um, but sometimes that's a fun way to learn. Um, my Thursday stream will be basic world building, article writing, article reviews, um, writing sprints, the kind of stuff we're doing all through summer camp. So, um, you know, we're all going to keep doing that. We'll just have a little more freedom of, about what we'll be writing. Oh, there it is. 50. Isaac made it. Uh, now we get, now we get scri scribe of Nakoti. Um, get him up to 52. That way I won't have to worry about him. Excellent. Congratulations, Isaac. Now you got work to do. Now you got to find, now you got to find emotes and, and, uh, sub badges and all that kind of good stuff. Um, Scribe needs more, one more. Get him there. Yeah. Scribe just got to 50. Excellent. <laughs> Anybody else out there that's close? You can't find Scribe's follow button. That might mean you've already followed him. Um, so anyway, like I said, the Thursday stream, which, as Shai, as long as you're going to keep going um, in your hour slot, I will keep my uh, Thursday stream with the extra half hour so that we're back-to-back, -back, uh, you know, so that I fill the whole gap between me and, and Hefe or whoever it'll be at 12, at my 12 o'clock. Um... And then I'm going to be doing a Tuesday stream. And my t 
Tuesday stream. Actually, I might switch the Tuesday and Thursday. I'm not sure yet. Uh, but my but my third stream of the week is going to focus. Um, it will, will will hopefully be of interest to those of you who are doing RPG related stuff, because what I'm going to be focusing on there is is writing um, game master ad adventure guide material in uh, World Anvil. Um, I know the stuff is all there. I haven't touched campaign yet. I just joined World Anvil two weeks before summer camp started. Uh, <laughs> Starlock is now monkey stilts. Okay. Uh, do we need an explanation for that transition? Uh, <laughs> um, okay. So, so anyway, like I said, um, after, after summer camp, I'm going to start experimenting with the uh, campaign-related stuff. Uh, I, I'm not not from the standpoint of trying to run a campaign, at least not yet, out out of uh, World Anvil. Uh, but but my focus is actually going to be toward putting together, um, and and I don't know which pieces I'm going to end up using between between the campaign related stuff, and possibly even delving into manuscripts. Um, I'm going to start getting into the world of of putting putting together. Uh, publishable adventure modules for, for an RPG world. Um, so, and again, that will be a learning experience for me, and I invite any and all of you to come along on that journey. Um, when the, my, the posts, like I said, I haven't decided which one is Tuesday and which one is Thursday, but, um, you know, when, once we get there, the, 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 the posts announcing the streams, I'll make sure that... Uh, you know, everybody knows what what it is they're in for on any given day, so I, I will be kind of hitting that variety, and at least we'll we'll keep that up until uh, sometime at the end of the year. I understand there's a couple of other big events that come up at the end of the year, um, so if we have to switch back to summer camp format for that, we'll do that too, um, which which is fine by me. All right, so let's get started today. Um, How's everybody doing on prompts? First of all, let's see. We, you know, let, let's see. Let's see a quick run through the chat and see how uh, um, how people are doing. Uh, we will be doing writing sprints today, by the way. So, hope hopefully people have have stuff that they're ready to go with. Uh, Kidapoy is two into gold. Coffee Quills has eleven done. All right, you got your bronze badge or copper badge. That's good. Uh, e songbird not that great you you got a lot started last night though e song you have to be um doing pretty well star starlock monkey has gotten hasn't gotten yours done yet today danny two more drafted yesterday i really need to start turning more in um uh, pie paints 16 Isaac slowly chipping away at 23. Got distracted with homework. Yeah, that that can suck, I guess. Um, but you got to do that too. Lots of seedlings, but nothing fleshed out. Um, yeah, you'll get there. You you need a couple of sprints to get to get some of those turned into at least um, deliverable. Um, let's see. Yeah, darn that homework. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, your your uni started already too, didn't it, Isaac? So so you're you're back at school. Um, you know, I'm not. I guess I guess you're on that Australia schedule. Guys, my internet is down again. You blame Q. <laughs> By the way, I don't know if it's the same thunderstorm that uh, that Shy had at the beginning of her stream, but I have one going overhead here too. So if you hear any booming, um. That's what it is. Um, hopefully, hopefully, it won't take out my internet. Um, so, if everything suddenly goes dark or freezes up, um, that could be one reason for it. But we'll see what we can do. Uh, all right. So, actually, before we start with that, um, I'm going to jump back in. Just something out of curiosity, by the way. I go through and 
one of the, one of the first things just just to get an idea of uh, oh, a tropical storm coming in Texas. Good for you. <laughs> um, I, I I go through the first thing I'll do when I hit a when I get to a prompt that I'm going to start with is I have I have a little bit of BB code that I like to just throw down in place so that it's there. Uh, again, you guys have all seen the drill. Anybody who's been on this stream has seen this drill. Um, the first thing I do when the prompts come out is I'll put a note in. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll create the the article stub in in World Anvil by pushing the magic button on the summer camp homepage. Um, I will copy the text of the prompt into the uh, into the the notes page here, the notes section, and then anything below that will be you know any of my thoughts. And sometimes this stays blank for a while, and sometimes there might be four or five possibilities here. Um, this particular one that I'm going to be working on today, I, I knew exactly what I was doing as it was coming out of Janet's mouth. Uh, so this should be an easy one for me. Uh, I then like to just run down through the thing and try to put tags. At first I'll put tags everywhere, and then I'll go back and I'll try to put tags where I think I'm going to need to put stuff for the article. Um, now, now the, this one is a funny uh, an interesting one. I'll get back to, to it in a second, but you'll see that I do have some stuff filled in here. Um, just, just note text. This all has to be fleshed out. But just doing this and, and a little bit of BB code that's in place, I, I found it very interesting that when I did a check, I'm already at 100 words. All right, so it, 300 words... So, somehow it doesn't seem like much. Then again, anybody who's seen my articles knows that I don't stop at 300. Um, I think I, I right now, I, I've got 23 articles done. I think f three or four of them are under 1,000 words. Um, my biggest one is, is 2004, which has nothing compared to, I don't remember whose it was that I saw last night, but somebody was looking at an article that was, I think, was it 3,000 or 6,000 words? Um, that, that's just plain scary, and it's actually probably something that should be broken up into multiple articles. Um, I'm seeing a lot of that. You know, every every one of the articles I do, I'm trying to make sure it, it has a lasting place in, in the world I'm building. Yeah, Isaac, it was either 3,000 or 6,000, and even 3,000 is, is, is a huge number, you know, for, for these things. Um so anyway, like I said, I, I want I want these articles to not be throwaway after summer camp. I, I want to ha want them to have a place. But but that sometimes, and maybe this is a problem everybody else has. Sometimes that creates an issue. Um, in this case, um, I'm going to be writing. You know, I'm I'm going to be doing the the city that that is famous for a particular resource, product or item. Well, okay, I'm going to identify a city. I'm going to identify a resource from that city, and, and I'm going to focus the article around answering the prompt. But in the long run, what I need is, is a more generic article about the city, um, you know, so that, you know, players in the world, you know, that are looking up the city, you know, and, and want to have information on it, they, I, I need, they need to find out more about just the one product that this, that this city does. So I, I kind of have to keep in mind that, you know, that there's, in the long run, there's, there's some stuff in here that might get trimmed down after some, you know, after summer camp is all done and judged and finished, um, that there's stuff that might need to be trimmed down or even trimmed out. And there's other stuff that's going to have to get put in in its place that I don't want to put in now because I don't want to end up with a 6,000 word article. Um, I mean, in the long run, I will want to talk about the government here, and I will want to talk about all of the bits of infrastructure, and if there's any special wealth or defenses, um, there might be more industry and trade than just the, th the ones that focus around, around the prompt here. Um, so all of these things will eventually be important, but they're not important to the article, so... I, 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 I'm going to try to keep myself a little limited. Um, and, and part of this is also an exercise in, again, not writing 6,000 6, word articles. <coughs> uh, 
Uh, I'm guessing other people have that issue too. Um, I guess the important thing to remember is, um, although we're doing these all for summer for summer camp, and we're you know we're expecting other people to to look at them and and at least for the sponsored prompts, you know, possibly read them and grade them or whatever it is we're doing. Ultimately, we are building worlds for ourselves or for whatever ulterior motive we're building for. So ultimately, all of these articles have to end up satisfying what we want them to satisfy. Um, summer camp is, is a wonderful diversion. Um, I've certainly created, uh, you know, and, and gotten idea sparks for a lot of things that I wouldn't have gotten around to yet uh, if it weren't for summer camp. Um, I, I've created probably more stubs than I've created articles for summer camp. All of that, but, but even there, I mean, if I'm creating a stub, it's because I realize at the time I'm going to need this. And I may not get back to that stub for a month, two months, six months, a year. But, you know, I, it, it, that's a question to ask yourself, too. Do you want to, do you, do you deal with just a stub? Do you just throw a tooltip in? Do you, you know, pass over something entirely and leave the, and leave the reader guessing? Um, you know, th one of the beauties of World Anvil is you get options. Um, you know, so... You know, that's that's one coffee quills. My first goal is world building, and after that is filling all the camp prompts. Yeah, I mean, that, that has to be our first focus. Is, is and, and that was one of the reasons they gave us the homework at the beginning, you know, to, to, to try to focus us on, you know, an area in the world and, 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 and that sort of thing. And I am trying my best to keep myself to a very small region of my world. Um, let me jump back and see. I've been seeing a lot of stuff. I saw, yeah, Tropical Storm in Texas. Um, you were right under the worst of Harvey. Wow. <laughs> well, Har Harvey, that was that's the one that kind of sat for four or five days in one place, didn't it? In, like in around the Houston area. Um, Andrew in Florida. Typhoon Hagabis in Tokyo. Nice to meet you, Hurricane Sibling. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I guess I had to deal with Sandy. I'm up in the northeast area. Um, actually, there's parts of my town that have still not recovered from Sandy. Uh, first, yeah, first goal is world building. We talked about that. Um, it, yeah, it's important to make sure that things have a purpose after camp. You know, they're either hooks. Um, the stub thing is normal, Delian says. I think my largest world is 70% stub at this point. I, I, I stopped looking because it, it's almost depressing when you see how many um, stub, stubs you've got. The biggest problem with the stubs is I've, I've also found that a few places where I ended up creating two or three copies of the same stub because I didn't realize I had already created one. Um, so I, I've taken to... Um, trying when, when I create a stub what I'll generally do and again this is me uh, but um, I, I first of all I, I definitely use the uh, we, we use we use the plus sign and we use the purple button um, let's see what that's gonna bring up and what I'll do is I will give it give it the the title I want. Obviously, I will pick the template that seems appropriate, and I will put in what I basically want the mouse over text to be. Um, at least in the in the vignette, and and the fact that it's not formatted because I I format all my vignettes a certain way. The fact that it's not formatted is 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 actually a hint when I bring up an article later on that this is that this really is a stub. Uh, what I will do eventually after that is actually go in and, and copy-paste what I put in the vignette into the mouse over snippet section um, of, the, uh, of the article, because that's, that's what I really want it to, uh, to, to show up as. Um, and, and just as a quick example of that, let me put this away. Um, just as a quick example of that, here's an article that I did recently, and um, do I have any good stubs in this one? 
Uh, well, it's all right. We'll make we'll make believe this is a stub. This is actually a full article. Um, but I, oh, look at that! I didn't put that. There's a real there's a real good example. No, I haven't created this article yet, and no, I haven't put anything in it. Uh, so that's actually a stub I need to get back to. Uh, but I, I I like the the mouse over look. Um, it, it lets you be very succinct. You know, the mouse over is is. Uh, if, if you don't put anything in here, it'll just take the beginning of your vignette, which which is usually good enough. Um, but the mouse over lets you actually control, um, you know, what shows up, knowing that it's showing up in the context of another article. Um, and, and and that's that's the beauty of it is, you know, I know that the only reason people are seeing this is because they're reading something else. And, and this term came up. So what do I need to tell them so that they can just keep going? How do you set up mouse overs? Okay. Um, you know what? Let's let's do this. Uh, where was that one that I didn't have? Where, would, where did the wasting go? There. All right. So if I, if I click on this from here, that'll bring me to the article. <clears throat> Obviously, there's there's lots of different ways to get to an article. Um, this is being very slow. Okay, here it comes. Oh, so I do have an article here. That's interesting. Oh, you know what? That, see, this is interesting. Here's the one downside to mouse overs. Once you say start using them, you need to use them everywhere. All right, because I told it I'm using mouse overs, it didn't pull stuff out of the vignette, all right, which is why that that hover was, was blank before. But anyway, all right, I do have an article here. So now if I go in to edit this article, and World Anvil is being very slow. You know, it, 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 it's a combination. I, I, I have a 12-year-old machine, and between running... OBS and doing the Twitch streaming and doing all of this, I notice World Anvil performance starts to suffer. So anyway, here we are in the article editor. And while I'm here, I will grab what I know I'm going to use as, as an example or as, as the main piece of my mouse over. So I'm going to just copy that. And the mouse over snippet is under on in every article for in every article template. All right. Every article template has a design tab. <coughs> if you click that design tab, the first thing you can do is change the picture, you know, the cover picture for the particular article. And the next thing there is mouse over snippet. And you come in here. You generally don't want to put any BB code in here. Um, I don't know if it even supports real BB code. but um, So I'm going to just basically trim this down. Uh, So the wasting is one of the many manifestations. The God War of the Creature. The result of a blight inflicted on the land by orcish priests of... You know, again, because this is... Because I don't want to create more rabbit holes. I'm not going to name the orcish god here. I'm going to just say by orcish priests. Because <coughs> that's something else you want to be careful of. You don't want to create... Um... You don't want to create the the infinite rabbit hole. Um, I could probably leave the rest of this. This last sentence might might want to just disappear because again, that asks that answers that introduces more questions. Um, so we'll we'll just leave it at that, and we'll save it. All right, and now. I'm not going to show. I'm not going to show this article because that's not where it's important. But if I come back to the article that we were looking at that had the mouse over in it, no, 
now when I sit on the wasting, there's the text. So your BB code works fine in the mouse over snippet dealy and says, okay. Uh, yeah, but like I said, I don't know that you want to get to, first of all, um, well, yeah, you, you can you can slide a mouse up into it. So if you wanted to do the rabbit hole thing, I guess in theory you could. Can you mouse over in a mouse over, Delian? Do you know what happens if 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 I have that set up? <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to go down that rabbit hole right now, but that might be something worth experiment experimenting with because it could end up looking uh, really fun. Um, the other thing that you need to do for mouse over snippets. Um, you know, I will, um, let, let's get to this, just so we know. Um, under Settings and Tools, and under Configuration for the whole world. Now, let me see if I can find this quickly enough. But there is a checkbox that you have to play with on the, uh, on the world configuration. And I believe it's either under Display or Styling... Um, yeah, you have a choice for article tooltips. Is that the mouse over snippet one? I, th I think that might be it. Uh, this display article tooltips. Um, if if you if you check this. Um, it will again the it, it will first look for the mouse over snippet. Um, no, sadly, no mouse overception by the looks of it, yeah. Uh, you see the links to the different article, but it doesn't give the tooltip. Oh, well, that's actually probably good, because if you could nest tooltips, it could, it could get out of hand. Um, so anyway, um, this checkbox, if it's checked, and, and the default behavior then would be, um, I guess if you've defined this, if you've, first of all, if you've explicitly defined a tooltip, you're going to get a tooltip. Um, if, if it's an article link, it will first look at the mouse over snippet, but if you don't have a mouse over snippet, um, it'll look at the vignette, but I seem, I think there's more than that, because I, I think there is explicitly a mouse over snippet switch, because otherwise it would have shown the piece of the vignette from my other, my other guy. Um, that's the BB code... Um, wouldn't be anywhere else, is it? <coughs> now I'm getting confused. Um, it's not there. It's got to be under. It's got to be one of the display ones. I know you do need to check. You do need to check check this one off. Um, but I seem to recall there being one something that actually said enable mouse over snippets, and I don't see it anymore. Then again, Dimmy has been making all kinds of changes. Unless it's here. Now, anybody else have some hints here? Anybody help me out, or are we, am I going to have to go hunting and look for this somewhere else? It's not anywhere else. It's not under utilities. That's stuff you never want to play with. Uh, it's not visibility. It's certainly not monetization. It's not the world date and time. It's not social. Styling theme. So it's got to be that. But that raises the question then, why didn't I see my vignette when I didn't have a mouse over snippet in place? <coughs> E-Songbird's internet is back up. Yay. Did I miss something here? Uh, 
Well, the article tooltips is all that's there. And I've just covered everything, so... Uh, All right, so I'm confused. All right, I didn't save anything here, so I'm not, I didn't change anything, so I'm not saving anything. At the, wait, wait. Kitapoy says at the bottom. At the bottom of... All right, now let's go back and find it again. I assume we're talking at the bottom of uh, display... Like I said, I know this article tooltips one is there. And then there's profile weight. Yeah, I, I, there used to be something, I know there used to be something that explicitly mentioned mouse over snippets. Um, but I also do know that, that again, Dimmy has been making a lot of changes on how this stuff looks and, and making it more compact and, and a little easier to deal with. <coughs> So I'm wondering if he didn't combine some behaviors, but I've got some leftover behavior floating around in the background from something that would probably go away if I unchecked this and checked it again, but I'm not going to do that right now. Um, what I am going to do, since we're already an hour, well, no, we're about what, half hour into the stream and I haven't done a thing yet, um, is to actually maybe get started on, on the kind of good stuff that we're going to be doing. So that's one of the fun fun things of these streams is is we get to all experience somebody else flailing about looking for something that they know is there, you know, which is something we all do, and we all think we're idiots when we do it, you know. Why why can't I remember this? It's good to see somebody else make the same mistakes. Makes you feel a lot better about yourself. Uh, so anyway, um, article of the day. I will be working on my settlement that is famous for a particular resource. Um, in my case, the settlement is the Free City of Icefell, which is a <coughs> very old city that used to be part of a great kingdom, but 2,000 years ago when the world was, was rocked by the Great Strife, uh, the kingdom kind of withdrew from the, from the area, leaving the city and its citizens behind. Uh, the city is, is has since prospered. It is, um, it, but it, it uh, well, apart from trade, it, it is no longer part of the kingdom. It is independent. There are a bunch of those the cities of that sort in my world. It sits on a large body of water called Icefell Bay. Um, it's, by the way, it's fairly north, um, not too far from, from where the, the, the land transitions from uh, from from temperate to tundra, uh, so it's a chilly climate, um, which is important for the product that the, for the product that we're growing, um, and the the product we're growing is uh, cafe, which is a absolutely no subtle subtlety at all in the attempt to to mask the fact that it's coffee. Uh, there are some differences, though. It's not a tropical plant in my world. It's a temperate plant. Um, it is still a, a cherry-like fruit, uh, the pit of a cherry-like fruit that has to be harvested and um, r retrieved, retrieved from, the, from the fruit hull and roasted and then ground and then steeped in water to, to make a, a wonderful beverage that everybody who can afford it looks forward to in the morning. Speaking of which, I have a little bit more of mine. Um, I've gotten a couple articles out of Cafe. Um, it was my uh, um, item associated with cultural events in the, in the Silver series of prompts. It's going to be this one, and it's also going to be the item cultivated for, uh, for high value. Um, the, the, is the tree itself or the bean itself. So I'm going to end up getting three articles out of out of Cafe. 
in, in this case, again, Icefell, this is just to give you a quick summary of what I'll be writing. Um, Icefell is not the is not known for the best coffee in the world. That that's something reserved to an area uh, from the First Kingdom, which is way off to the west. Uh, but the coffee cafe that grows around Icefell is somewhat unique, uh, probably because of the um, climate and the flavor profile is a little different from from the more traditional First Kingdom cafe. Uh, and it, it's unique enough that you know, if, if, as as with any of these things, um, there there are quite a number of people that actually prefer it to the First Kingdom Cafe because of its its tasteful profile. But of course, the cafe snobs will say that it's inferior because it's not true cafe and blah 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 blah. Uh, so they have to put up with that. Um, but in the meantime, we have we have a city that that kind of rev that you know that will heavily revolve around this product. There's going to be large um, plantations, I guess you you can call them, of, of trees growing out, outside the city and around the city. Um, those those beans or, or pits have to be harvested and processed and roasted, and then there would obviously be quite a deal, quite a bit of trade involved. Uh, you know, merchant middlemen and warehousing and packaging and shipping. And packaging and shipping are always challenging when you're talking about a uh, a, a medieval-style fantasy world. I mean, it's not like I can vacuum seal the stuff. Um, you know, so so you know, it has to it has to be delivered and transported, which is one of the reasons, by the way, once you get any distance at all away from the cities that that produce it. Um, it gets rather expensive um, because not, it, not only does it have to be carried, but, but you know it, it does have a shelf life, and and people that live far far away end up getting used to inferior um, versions of it because the best they can get is something that was harvested six months ago, a year ago, or or whatever. It's not as fresh as we might all be used to in today's world. Coffee quills redeemed a posture check before heading out to sleep. Thank you for that. <laughs> so, why don't we get started? It is almost uh, a quarter after the hour. Um, everybody take a minute or two to uh, get your own articles up and ready if you want to join in a sprint. Because uh, we're going we're gonna to start a 10 minute sprint in a minute or two. Because I've been talking non-stop for 45 minutes. Wow. It's time to slow down. I assume, by the way, the music is, is a bearable um, volume. I haven't touched it from the last settings, so hopefully it's okay the way it is. Um, picked something a little mellow, mellower today. <laughs> I'm like Alexander Hamilton. Uh, no music? Nobody's got music? Uh, you're going to make me check this? Uh, you should have music. It's just a little quiet. Esong, are you saying you can't hear it, or I should turn it off? Uh, tillers, ducks and dinos. Can't hear it. Okay, that I can fix. How about now? Any better now? Too loud? Not loud enough still? Voice is loud, so music could be okay, but I've got volume turned way down, so can't hear. Okay, yeah, I, I don't want it to overpower my voice, and... You know what it is? I tried a different channel on uh, on Pretzel this time, so maybe this channel is a little quieter. Um, usually I have the other problem, which is my voice isn't loud enough and um, the music is overpowering. So let me give it one more shot and see if we can make it bearable, because 
We're going to start a sprint, and I'm not going to be talking as much anyway, so... Uh, looks like my voice is pounding away today, though. Is my voice too loud? Uh, let's see how that, that does. Yeah, it's always fun to deal with sound stuff. Yeah. Uh, okay, voice is good. Still no music. I'll give you a few seconds there to see if you can hear music. I'm not seeing any responses on the music. I'm, I don't want it to get any louder than it is. I mean, it's it's already based on the levels I'm seeing. It it should almost be too loud. But then again, it looks like my voice is doing much better than it usually does too. Either, either I finally got the microphone placement right, or I'm starting to talk louder. No music, but it's fine. All right, I'm not sure what's going on there. Um. Pretzel thinks it's playing music, and um, and my levels seem to indicate that it's broadcasting out. But we'll deal with it. We'll, you know, if it's there, it's there. If it's not, it's not. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, you can put music on your own computer. Yeah. Um, all right, that's that's strange, but uh, then again, we're still in the week the internet went down, according to Q, right? Uh, <laughs> okay, now Scaly Dragon can hear the music, but I'm much louder than the music. All right, well that's good. Um, like I said, I don't want the music to be too loud. Am I too loud? I'm not. Am I breaking up or doing anything? Um, you know, any any kind of uh, overloading or staticking? Um, apart from when my voice cracks like that. Alright, let's just get going. Uh, okay, sprint. One of these days I'm going to actually get myself a timer up and running that will work on, uh, on the screen so you can all see it. But in the meantime, I'm going to load my phone with a 10 minute timer. All right, it will be a 10-minute sprint. I will give periodic time checks uh, because I don't have anything on my screen. And if everybody's ready, on your mark, get set, and let's go. Uh, where do I want to start? Significant industries and trade in Iceville center around the production of transport rust and tanning around the world. Is
Okay, we are at the... We've passed the seven minute to go mark. We're down into the sixes. That's ugly, but it'll do for now. Just under four minutes to go, folks. Interesting to see what I come up with for that. Um, two and a half minutes to go, folks. Packaging the pits to maintain their freshness for a maximum amount of time is a challenge, but the merchants of Icefell have devised several solutions. Am I going to leave that hanging, or am I going to describe the solutions? We'll have to think about that. For now, I'm going to leave it hanging. Um...
Um, we'll get back to that. I want to put something in there. I'm going to have to come back and hash out a lot of this. And that's it. Time is up. So finish up your sentences and let's do a word count and see how we all did. Actually, before we do anything else, everybody hit save. Save your changes. Writer Greg has joined us. Good morning. Uh, Miller Damon has joined us. Good morning or afternoon or evening. Um, Danny is shaking fists at Q. Yes, all internet problems, all internet problems since the release of his uh, Week the Internet Went Down article in Megacorpolis. Uh, we've decided that Skynet was watching and reading that article as well and got some bad ideas, and we are all paying the consequences ever since. So it's his fault, and don't forget to tell him that when you see him. That took a long time to save, but at least it finally did. Uh, Scaly Dragon, 225 words. Let's see how I did. Now again, I started with, with almost 100 words that were nothing to do with the article. So I'm going to subtract 100 from whatever it says here. It says 330, so I got 230 done. Not bad. Uh, Miller Damon, 128. Writer Greg, my problems were not the internet. It was an update to Streamlabs that broke some plugins. Ah, okay, yeah, I, 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 I use the uh, vanilla OBS system um, to to control my streaming, and that's basically because I I did that to, to actually start doing some uh, before I started streaming here. Um, I I was doing some YouTube stuff, and I actually have to get back to doing that one of these days. Um, all related to world building, by the way. Before I found World Anvil, I started using YouTube to uh, to track the pro the the process of building a world from scratch for an RPG. Uh, Isaac, 194 words, very good. One more sprint, and you'll get an article done. Um, Scaly Dragon, did the internet break? I just woke up. No, not today. Uh, it's behaving itself today. Um, in fact, so far, and I, I, I knock, I knock wood here. Um, I haven't seen any major dips in my frame rates, so I can't complain about that. The only thing that's weird that's going on today is I seem to have an issue with music, um, which, as far as I can tell, is broadcasting. Um, but some people are hearing it and some people are not, and that really has me confused. Uh, unless it's a, a matter of just volume levels. Again, that, that could very well be. Um, but we're going to ignore that for now. Uh, here's another question. Uh, did, did, here's, a, here's a quick side question for everybody. Uh, I did one stream last week. Um, most of the time I just use Pretzel because it's easy to just pick something that's good background music, especially good uh, upbeat writing music. Um, but Last week, my, my Thursday stream, I think it was, I was doing my, um, the, uh, the, the, well, it, for me anyway, it was, it was the, the blight, you know, the, the blight article, the, uh, you know, the, oh, the natural disaster article, that's what it was. And instead of happy, upbeat pretzel music, um, I went with a stream, an all, a, a stream full of Dan Himes, um, Norse Viking folk music 
um, which was basically a, you know, a, a wonderful mix of doom and gloom kind of sounding music. Uh, it was perfect for it was perfect for the theme. Um, what would you guys want to hear? Um, as, as far as music, because uh, I don't hear any of it while I'm doing this. Uh, the one time I tried to actually rig myself so that I could hear the music as well, I ended up creating an infinite echo loop that I had to like reset everything to make go away. So I, I have my whatever, whatever music is playing, I'm hearing none of it, so it does me no good. So it might as well do you all good. Um, so if so, if anybody has any recommendations, you know, what pretzel channel do you want to hear, or would you rather hear uh, Danheim Viking stuff? Um, I'll be happy to give you guys whatever it is you want to hear. Uh, Writer Greg, your home router crashed and you lost internet. Oh, is that after you fixed everything else, or? Uh, you can hear music quietly. I think I think it's there. I think it's just quiet, at least relative to my uh, to my voice. Uh, I'm hoping my voice isn't breaking up because it looks like my levels are sometimes peaking out. Um, all the problems you had are in your house and not the generic internet. <coughs> you can still blame Q though, Greg. Um, feel feel free to blame Q for all the problems because. It's fun. Um, okay, so um, it was actually Streamlabs yesterday. <laughs> uh, okay, um, we got through one sprint. Uh, is everybody ready to jump right into another one, or is there anything else that I missed that I need to do here? Uh, Danny, you updated your summer camp journal page during that sprint. Cool. Uh, yeah, I actually started one of those, uh, not not so much a journal, but just a tracker for myself, and I haven't gotten back to it. I need to do that. Uh, I think I've only posted about half of my summer camp articles on my own uh, my own progress page. Um, so, so I need to go back and get to that one of these days. Um, okay, that's all caught up. Uh, so yeah, you know what? We're, we've been doing well. Uh, a couple people were more than halfway to getting at least enough words to qualify for a completed uh, prompt. So let's see what we can do about getting some of those to completion. Uh, Ten minutes seems to be a good sprint time. I know people experiment with everything from like five minutes to 15 or 20 minutes. I think 20 minutes is too long. Uh, that's not a sprint. That's a that's a mid-level run. Uh, so, Miller David, I finished the diverse fauna prompt at work today. Good, excellent. Now you're doing the almost destroyed settlement prompt. Okay. Uh, Danny, twenty-minute sprint hype. Yeah, you like to do the twenty-minute ones. Uh, like I said, I, to, to me anyway, I mean, they're, they're good. Well, you get you have the kitty track that goes for 20 minutes, though. I'll, so you have something to entertain people that aren't sprinting. I don't have anything that fancy. Um, so I have to balance between, uh, you know, the, the people that are just watching. You know, nobody, nobody wants to tune into 20 minutes of nothing but keyboard type sounds. So, all right, but let's get set. Let's do another 10 minute sprint. Two ten minutes makes the twenty minutes, so so they will be ready to go. And if everybody is ready, three, two, one, sprint.
Okay. When I hit a dead end in a paragraph, there's no good way to keep going from here. We are past the six minute mark. Five minutes and change to go. leave that at that for now. Uh, by the way, I, sh I should also say, I have yet to complete an article on a, on a stream. Um, but that's just kind of the way I work. Um, I'm, I'm more interested in helping you guys get your work done. Um, as long as I end up with enough of the article so that over the course of the day I can finish it, I'm very happy. Um, and I think that's where I'm going to end up. I can get rid of this now, by the way. Alternative names. I might come up with one just to be interesting there. Oh, this is alternative names for the city, though. I have to be careful. Um, you'll notice, by the way, I did title this. You know, I, I actually put a title in here that mentions both the city and and the the cafe. Um, this will probably, as I was saying way early in the stream, um, I will almost certainly not have this. Will not be my main article about the city of cafe or the city of Icefell. Uh, and in the main article is the one that will fill in all of these other bits and bobs and goodies about how the city works and who runs it and all of that kind of stuff. Um, the focus on this article is on trade um, because the trade is is the focus of the prompt, um, and that's that's something else we can all you know remember to do. I mean, you don't have to end up with exactly one, especially from the uh, world build from the RPG world building side. Um, you, you need at least one article to describe a major location in your world, but you might need more than one. And, and you know, sometimes, you know, something like this, I mean, you know, that this trade is going to be extremely important to the city, but it might not be extremely important to the reason your adventurers are going there this time. So rather than bog them down with hundreds of words of stuff that really means nothing to them, um, World Anvil gives us a way to isolate the, you know, various bits of information and, and give the players what they need when they need it, uh, which is always nice. Oh, Gift of Gabby, welcome, by the way. I um, personally am writing about, um, th I'm doing the, uh, the, the city and a resource that made it famous article. Um, by the way, two minutes and fifty-eight seconds to go, folks, on the on the sprint. Um, the city is a uh, port city in my world. Um, the famous resource is uh, my analog for coffee. And every time I say that, I have to drink some. Um, and. Um, and that's what I'm working on. So um, I've got a good start on the vignette now. 
I've got a good start on the industry and trade. I definitely need more work on the guilds. I'm not sure if I need to get into history. Um, especially since it's history of the settlement. I'll probably put something brief in here. That goes back way into when they first discovered that 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 coffee trees would grow around the city, but you know, but they produced a slightly different product. Uh, so let me give myself a note here. Um, go. Uh, that'll be good enough for now for a prompt to remember to go back and do something. Um, tourism. I might actually put something in this tourism section um, have, having to do with people who, who, who go to the city, uh, you know, especially fans of this particular variety of coffee. Uh, who go to the city to get to get it extra fresh and you know and see what it's really like you know like like kind of like people who 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 need to go to the uh, you know to to a, to a certain region to experience a certain cuisine authentically you know it's kind of like kind of like that. Gabby, you're rewriting your elemental can turn into animal people. What prompt is that? All right, 30 seconds to go, by the way, folks. Uh, I assume that's one of the, uh, the summer camp prompts. Uh, um, as you folks might be able to tell, um, I'm kind of hitting a wall on, on my quick writing here, so I'm kind of punting on the last little bit of the sprint. sprint. And there's the end of the timer. The sprint is over. Everybody hit save. Let's not forget to hit save. What I am going to do is take a look at what this thing looks like so far. There it goes. Okay, I still need to come up with my trademark opening quote. Uh, I have a bit of a uh, vignette there. Uh, defenses is literally the first prompt that shows up. Um, industry, guilds, and faction. Yeah, that, that looks like it's going to end up being enough. Um, so how many words? Let's see. E Songbird, 20 words written after an 18 minute conversation with your internet service provider. Oh. <laughs> that does not sound good. We, you, I'm impressed that you are able to contact your internet service provider in, in the time it uh, took to complete a sprint, much less spent 18 minutes talking to them. Um, well, I'm up to 423 words. If I take out the, uh, the meta. You know, the BB code meta, meta words, I'm, I'm at least over the limit, so anything I do now is gravy, so that's good to know. Miller Damon, 145 words this time. I think you were close to that last time, so not too bad. Scaly Dragon, 246 this time, slightly better. Uh, again, you too, if you're working on the same prompt that you were working on the first time around, you should, you should certainly be over over minimum. I don't know how done you think your article is, but uh, you, you've certainly put in enough words. Uh, yes, E Songbird, yes. Feel feel free to use the roar. <laughs> <coughs> 66 more words for the historical technology prompt. Not bad. Uh, Miller Demo, 277. Oh, you didn't quite get there yet. Okay. Well, we'll have we're going to have at least one more sprint, I think. Um, tell tell you what though, um, 
does anybody have any articles they would like to uh, to have me go through? Uh, just to break things up, I'd be happy to read an article or two. Maybe we'll do one now, do another sprint. You know, maybe from now out we'll we'll alternate between articles and sprints. How does that sound? Because um, I still have some time to go, quite a, quite a bit of time to go before I have to worry about uh, passing the torch. I have better than an hour. Um, so, does anybody have an article that they'd like to have me look at? It is safe to post the link in this chat. Um, you will not go to jail. And E Songbird is the first one up with one. So let me just make sure I have room for that to come up up there. And we're going to grab E Songbird's article. Again, anybody else post an article, we'll get to them. Um, our jailbird appreciates the fail-free environment. Uh, okay, Miller Demon, you'll be up next. Like I said, I think what we'll do is we'll do we'll do an article and then we'll do another sprint, and we'll just alternate our way out from here, just to keep things interesting. The Tiufi species of ghost is that properly pronounced? Is it Tiufi or Tiuffi? Tiuffi. Okay, I'm assuming that, that yes is from Tiuffi. Okay. Oh, I, I keep meaning to ask you. I have to ask you. the, the Your cover picture, um, is, is that grabbed from somewhere? Or did you have somebody do that for you for this? Or is that like from Salt Marsh or... Cause it, cause it's really cool. <laughs> I, I like the mechanical uh, lobster claw on on the uh, mer. -per I assume that's a mer person. Uh, grab from the salt marsh book. Okay. Uh, well, they're scary looking. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask about them too. Did this picture is this? Uh, you know, are, are these are these things real and floating in the sea somewhere, or uh, or or is this um, original artwork or derived artwork, or is this an art breeder result? Because this could almost be that. Although I don't know how art breeder do deals with multiple faces. A real deep ocean creature. Okay. Yeah, there are scary things in, in, in our oceans. Um, all right, so let's get started. Hatchet fish, okay. Okay, the Tiufi. The Tiufi are a carnivorous species that dwell in the deep ocean caverns. Um, you, you have this set as a link. Um, I, since nothing is coming up, I'm guessing it's a draft. That's okay. Um, Near, near the Tridon tribes. They are a migratory, territorial, they are migratory, territorial, and hunt Tridon, merfolk, and any other deep ocean creature that crosses their path. Teofi are usually six to nine feet long. Oh, they're little guys, huh? They have distinctively long, almost gaunt faces with two black bug-like eyes. They have three rows of teeth, their jaws are stretchy ligaments that allow their mouths to grasp things more than twice their size. <coughs> this is particularly particularly important if the prey swells up from the Tufi tentacle toxins. All right, so that leads us into thinking about uh, yes, need to remove the draft settings um, if if you want the. Uh, that's one of the downsides of, of, of even stub articles. You need to you need to make them public at the very least, so that the um, mouse overs or the whatever. If you don't want to do that, you have to rely on on the tooltip approach instead, um, which you you can. I I that, that that there's another interesting question from more the experts out there. Can you nest a reference inside a tooltip? And, and if so, what would that look like? Um, okay, so 
anyway, like I said, that last that last sentence tells me that there's you know, um, in TUFI tentacle toxins, for which which means they have tentacles, um, which haven't been mentioned yet. Um, so I don't know if you you want to mention that as since you're describing them. Uh, it sounds like tentacles are something that would probably want to be in the description. Um, so you might want to think about that. Um, you, you can you can you can hold off on describing the toxins until later. Uh, you do okay. You have a venom symptoms down at the bottom, but but the tentacles just kind of come up out of nowhere um, at at the very end there. So you might want to at least mention you know wh how many tentacles, where are they attached. Do they spew out of the mouth? Do they, um, you know, do they trail behind it? You know, what what what's the story with the tentacles? Uh, ah, I see. We're going to find out some of that. Okay, juvenile teufi are easily identifiable by the unique tentacle located above their eye sockets. The tentacle will slowly shift back and forth along its spine until it rests just in front of the front dorsal fin. This tentacle releases a paralyzing toxin and is also used to attract potential mates. Stonefish are the most common cause of death for the juvenile teufi. They do not actively hunt them, but because they are territorial and cover many of the same areas, clashes occur. The bumpy texture of their skin blends into the stony terrain, and the young teufi, whose senses are still developed, often bump into one of their 13 poison sacs. Um, just as a spelling issue, usually when we're talking um, biological, um, sac should not have the K in it. <clears throat> okay, so so juveniles have have the tentacle. Um, so I guess now my question is, does it get bigger in a mature tufi? Does it fall off in a mature tufi? Um, you know what? What? What's the story with the tentacle there? Um, Tufi are a migrating species. They spend half of the year in the deep ocean caverns, and again, that's drafted, where food is plentiful. Their tux, tough exoskeletons protect them from the ocean pressure and provide a natural defense against inevitable environmental hazards like the rupturing of the cavern vents. They spend the other half of the year mating by the western caves in the Azure Sea. The region has particularly spiky edges where the female teufi lay their eggs. They stay in the area for several months while the juvenile teufi develop their exoskeleton needed to withstand the pressure of the deep ocean. Uh, the trek between the two regions usually takes four to six weeks. Teufi make their first trip at age five. Mothers will stay with their young the first three years. After that, they are expected to show their strength by surviving the deep ocean without assistance. Okay, mating toofy. Shortly after arriving to the mating ground, the male toofy fight each other as a show of strength to court female toofy. <coughs> why is it always the males that fight over the females? Why can't sometimes why sometimes somebody have females that fight over the males? Uh, most male teufi will establish a harem of five to seven females in a mating season. Once a female chooses to be in the harem, the male impregnates the female. The female teufi will then lay an average of seven fertilized eggs in the spiky cave walls, protected from some egg-snatching fish that populate the ocean floor. The eggs have a 45-day 45 45-day 45 incubation period. If a male takes over another male's harem, he will cannibalize the young after they've hatched. Okay, he could also just eat the eggs you know, rather than waiting for them to hatch. But uh, uh, and that that again is is typical biological behavior for uh, harem type creatures. So venom symptoms: a creature stung by the teofi's dorsal tentacle will experience the following symptoms: muscle paralysis, severe breathing difficulties, a drop in blood pressure, and muscle muscle swelling. Um, you, you say severe breathing difficulties. Um, this is underwater. Um, the kind of, especially if it's attacking other fish, 
Um, y- y- hmm. I'm, I'm not sure what to, to do with this. I mean, breathing, like guild, guild, guild creatures, um, they, they don't inhale and ec- Usually when we have problem, you know, when air breathing creatures suffer um, toxic effects that affect breathing, it's, it's usually muscular. <clears throat> and it usually involves, um, you know, just the abil- inability to in- expand the lungs and contract the lungs. Um, sea creatures with gills, assuming these things are gilled, um, e- even the ones that sort of flap their gills, they flap their gills to help move water over them. Um, but but the oxygen exchange that happens just kind of happens. So if the animal, as long as the animal can move, um, you know, it, it, it can exchange oxygen. If it can't move, it can't. So I'm, I'm, I'm just not sure what, what severe breathing difficulties looks like in a, uh, in, in a sea, breathe, in a sea breathing, um, creature. Um, unless there are other creatures that, that actually work by inhaling and exhaling water, uh, like we inhale and exhale air. In that case, it makes perfect sense. So I guess I need to know a little bit more about the rest of the uh, fauna uh, to have a, a final opinion on that. Uh, common causes of death. The Delta Eufy do not have any natural predators. They are often infected by parasites found in the deep ocean vents. Once they enter old age, they are often devoured by younger, healthier Teufi who use this as an opportunity to establish dominance within the community. Ah, uh, Yes. So, so, so the males will. So the males eat the children, and the ch- surviving children end up eating the males. That's always karma. I love it. Prey. To feed a wide variety of prey. Some have more than six different species in their stomach at a time. Triton use pack tactics to hunt. A group of three to five to feed will surround their prey. Uh, should that be to feed use pack tactic? Pack tactic. The uh, pack. T- Pack tactics to hunt. I'm guessing that should be TUF on that f- end of that first line. A group of three to five TUF will surround their prey and use their long whip like tails. I assume that should be tails, not trails. To trap their prey with an E in an area and wear them down to exhaustion. Once their prey looks to be wearing down, they will sting their prey with the paralyzing venom. The swarm will lunge for the food, extending their jaws fully open, revealing three rows of spiky teeth. They will often bite each other in their fervor, relying on the exoskeleton for protection. Much like a snake, the Teufi usually swallow their prey whole. Uh, Tridons and the Teufi. Triton reference Teufi often in fables and fairy tales. They play, they play a small part in the... Got a lot of myth about the trident of the deep, and again, that's um, you have a bracket showing here, so you might have a misformed reference. Uh, you might want to check that. Um, and again, either either it's because it's misformed or because uh, because it's a draft that I that I don't get any sort of pop up. Uh, try to and try to avoid the Tufi territories and cautiously enter the area only when most of them have migrated to the western caves of the Azure Sea. Tufi are a common item given to young children um, and are often the villains in their games. Uh, toy Tufi are sorry are a common item given to child. Okay, I, I missed the word toy there, and I was going to ask about that. Uh, here, here, have, have a nice pet. It's poisonous. It can kill you. Um, no, toy to you if he makes perfect sense. I mean, how many, how many stuffed sharks do we have floating around the world these days, um, in kids' bedrooms, so. Um, and that's it. Um, like I said, the biggest question I have after all, after reading all this, the biggest technical question, again, goes, but goes back to the tentacles. Um, you mention, you mention, you describe them very well in the juvenile, but you don't say what happens to them as adults. You, you suggest that they're still there because they're still using toxins in their, in their hunting and killing. 
Um, so you, you might want to just put a line up at the very top that, that talks about the, uh, um, the, the tentacle. And if, if it is something that just appears when they're juvenile, um, you, again, does it, you know, is, does it just, you know, d does it go through stages? Does it get longer in an adult or does it do something different or does it stop moving up and down or back and forth or, um, whatever. So you might want to just, you know, go, go there, be a little more descriptive about the tentacle because, because there's little hints of it all through the article and you, you keep wondering, you know, what are, what are they going to look like? And I realize the picture doesn't really have much of a tentacle on it. So, so you might want to be, you know, you might be just trying to avoid having to describe a disparity between the picture or whatever, but I wouldn't worry about the picture. Uh, average lifespan, 55 years, yeah, lifestyle migratory, region deep open carrots in length 6 to 9 feet. Yeah, that's a summary of the stuff that was over there, so that's good. Um, oh, there's a picture of a stonefish. <coughs> um, and again, they were natural enemies, or are, are they, they're not, are they actual enemies, or are they uh, just... Um, casual enemies. I mean, I'm, you know, I, I know you say that the uh, they're, they're the biggest cause of death, but uh, where where is that mentioned? Where are the stonefish mentioned? Let's see. The eggs are too deep in the cavern walls for them to be eaten. Oh, okay. All right. That could, that answers that question. Um, so they have to wait for the young to come out, and then they just eat them as they come out. Uh, I think the tentacle will be small to juvenile and three feet as an adult. Okay. They're just territorial. Um, oh, is it in the juvenile section where it talks about the uh, stonefish? Okay. Um, all right, other than that, I think, I think this is a really good, you know, you know it, it, it's, it's almost there. Um, like I said, if, if for me, if, at least a little bit more about the tentacle, um, there, there were a couple of spelling or, or whatever cleanups, uh, to do, but, but I don't count those as far as, as far as doneness or completeness of the article. Um, the, the little bit about the tentacle would make me happy in, in this, in this article. And, and maybe revisit uh, the the issue again about breathing difficulties with the uh, uh, with the venom. I mean, for for an aquatic creature, uh, the muscle paralysis alone is probably good enough to be fatal. Because um, if you can't swim, I mean, again, that kind of brings with it breathing difficulties. If you can't pass air over your gills. Um, um, you know, so but I, so I'm not quite sure about that. It just, you know, again, in in what you know is an underwater world, seeing the phrase "severe breathing difficulty" just raises questions. <laughs> um, you know, but it might be perfectly understandable or explainable. So, uh, other than that, I think it's great. I've already hit the like. I am already following your world. So very good. Um, if anybody else do, you know what, I'll, I'll, I will post the link in the chat in case anybody else wants to follow this. And. The other thing I'm going to do, we're going to do another sprint next, but before it gets too far gone, uh, I want to grab Millidemon's article. I really, I really do need to get myself set up to do... Uh, to do more of these things, but we'll get Melodeon's article set up. And while I'm here, um, we 
we have Gift of Gabby with a It's Not Done But How Is It So Far? We'll be happy to answer that. Um, let me just get it up here in my... Uh, See, I assume you do have it public, by the way. If not, we'll find out in a second. Okay, good. It, it does have it there. All right, so we'll be doing Melodemons first, but I have those two up. Was there anybody else? Oh, it's coming back. Okay, my frame rate just took a real big hit for a second, so I'm curious. Did you guys, uh, did I freeze up? Did I disappear for a minute, or, or, or what was going on? Um, but now it seems to be fully back to normal, so hopefully we'll be fine. Uh, that was the first. That was the first glitch or hit I've seen all all during this stream. You know, if, if 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 you guys, if you guys, anybody saw a glitch, a glitch in me uh, within the last minute or so, uh, that was almost certainly me, because like I said, my frame rate dropped to zero, um, and and I understand enough about this to know that zero frames per second means you're not seeing updates. So, <laughs> uh, thank God for that little green. That little green box down there. Uh, as long as it stays green, we're in good shape. All right, so next sprint. Let me get the clock going. Ready? Ten minute sprint again in three, two, one, go. I just saw a thing pop up there about OBS reconnecting or something. Or am I still here? Can somebody tell me, are you still seeing me? Am, am I still broadcasting? Okay, I am still here. Good. Okay. So anyway, sprint has started. You've got 30 seconds into the sprint already, so everybody get to work. I know what I can do here. Okay. Since I'm supposed to be talking about the city. Come on. Uh, oh, the sprint is a 10 minute sprint. Um, you have eight minutes to go right now. Um, do, 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 do. I can spend a little time talking about.
how how the industry affects employment. Moving the many large batches of pits into and out of the roasters requires a significant number of people. Two. Five minutes to go, folks. People. Uh, to accomplish. Let's break that up. Not an easy one. And to the handful. That's the roasters. Come on. Oh no. I am getting a not responding error. I might be done typing for the time being. This has happened to me before, too. If experience serves, though, you will still be hearing me. I am still broadcasting, so I will keep that up. Um, of course, if my Firefox doesn't come back, I'm not going to be able to read articles. Um, I might have to actually restart that. It'll be interesting to see what that does. I'm going to just leave it alone for a minute and see if it comes back on its own. Uh, for those of you who are still sprinting, you still have 2 minutes and 44 seconds to go.
I'm going to sit here and pray quietly that this recovers on its own. And there it goes. Yay. Yes, it came back. I am not going to risk anything else. Less than two minutes to go. And there it goes away again. Look at this. Isn't this special? Okay, I'm looking I'm looking for for people or things to blame. What I think I may need to do is very seriously uh look into using a different browser from Fire from Firefox uh, cuz Firefox has been misbehaving a lot lately. I really don't want to use Chrome. And I really don't want to use the Windows default, what do they call it, Edge now, I think. Um, because, first of all, Chrome is probably the least generically compatible browser out there. And Edge, while it's pr pr supposed to be pretty good as far as general compatibility, uh, Edge is so filled with, Hi, we're Microsoft, Let me let us help you, garbage that I don't like to use it at all. I've, I've been in the tech business long enough to, to be one of those people that prefers to not have every single bit of software that I put on my machine try to anticipate my needs and desires um, so that they can help me. And there's it. The timer is done. Time is up. So how did everybody do in their sprint? Hopefully I'll find out how I did shortly. Anybody? Anybody finish up? By the way, don't forget to hit save. I would if I could, but I can't at the moment. Uh-oh. Here we go again. I'm still getting good frame rates. So I have to believe that you guys are hearing me and seeing me. But my uh, chat looks like it's locked up now. That means it's time to go to plan B this time. So that I can at least see my chat. Can I bring up my own chat on my phone? It's going to make me go live. Uh, that's not going to work. All right. Well, I'm hoping that this is going to come back shortly. Um, because it would be nice to see what people are saying. Because uh, my chat window is frozen up now, as well as everything else. Um, I guess I could start trying to... Uh, it's way too soon for me to give up on this stream. So I'm, I'm, you're, you're going to watch me struggle here for a while now, folks, while you're all probably talking happily amongst yourselves. Uh, feel free to do that. I am going to start seeing if I can get some stuff stopped and restarted without wiping out the whole stream. Hopefully that'll let me get through the end of it. 
Um, also, hopefully, that'll let me get through um, those last two uh, prompts that I want to read. Okay, we're going to end the browsers. Now, one of these browsers is running my Twitch stream bot, but that might not matter. Okay, looks like that's gone. So now we're looking at the infinite stretch of my uh, OBS window. Um, I am jumping around a lot though on camera, which is surprising because it doesn't seem to think my frame rates are a problem. Just in case, I am going to solve the music and for all uh, by turning it off for now, just to see if we can get through the end of this stream. It's starting to pitch rain outside my window. I wonder if that has anything to do with anything. Oh, there goes the frame rate down to two. Oh, isn't this?